no pain, no pain. It, it happened so fast that I didn't know what hit me. I was body surfing and a wave crashed on top of me and I hit the bottom and that broke my neck. Tell me about my life being in a wheelchair and how do I live my daily life. Um, from kids from Dobbin high schools coming here and Basically, you're going to see how I live in a wheelchair. I was involved uh, the day that the students came here to Inglis to uh, participate in the Day in the Life program to actually get in the wheelchairs and uh, have an opportunity to see what it was like to be a resident here and be someone who's paralyzed and in a wheelchair. It really can't really do nothing that I could do. It really can't. All they could do is sit down, watch TV, play games, but I can walk anywhere I want, they can't do that. Well, when I first thought about it, I said, oh God, I'm going to be a day in the life, I'm going to be strapped down to a wheelchair, and I'm not going to be able to move, I'm going to be like completely immobilized. Knowing that I'm going to do what they do every single day, so... There's going to be certain things I can do with certain limits, just being them for a day. I really did want to know like how I was supposed to be not doing nothing, but today I will find out. Being in a wheelchair, you know, it's life. And um, you can have a life even though know, you're disabled. People that look at me, I just wish they can understand that they can Take me as a person and look past the chair. We wanted them to have the maximum experience of, of being in the chair and, and feeling as though they were paralyzed and that they had to depend on just what they could do with the controls. We wanted them to uh, be able to um, interact with people uh, outside as they were going around the building uh, out in the yard uh, when they were up in recreation. I think that it it's one thing to hear somebody tell you about those things, but to experience it yourself is suddenly very real and personal. We wanted to create as much of a real experience for them as we could. Yeah, you guys gotta go to the bathroom later? <laughs> there are um, stalls that have curtains in them. Hold on, here's your camera. Here's your body, since you can't get out of the chair. Mike, you use this mic? No, you don't want what you don't want to do. <laughs> you want a cat very near? Because that's what I use. Yeah, oh, no, I don't think so. Probably you really look this way, yeah. For someone who's in a wheelchair, uh, it, it's totally different. And I think that people will see this as they watch Antoine and Calvin kind of struggle with some of these things. You know, getting in and out of the elevator or, or, or um, getting through a doorway or something. Um, they'll see what it's like and, and um, it's just a different perspective than someone who is already disabled who's talking about it or demonstrating it perhaps. Um, it's a different perspective for, 
when you're showing someone who's not disabled suddenly having to face these issues. This thing about you eating with one hand and you just trying to do everything just with one hand, I couldn't do it. Like, and it just was, it took me about about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. I used to eat a hamburger and the other time it only take like two or three minutes. So my hands was tied up, so I really had to, you know, have my hands and eat real slowly. I was really interested in uh in eating like like that be um because I was sitting right next to Mike and uh the way he was eating I just was eating the same way he was and it was difficult that's why it was difficult for me personally because I was watching him eat and I was trying to do the same thing he was doing Bell, listen, um, we're going to go up to um, choose shuffleboard, so just come on down to my place. All right? See you later. The whole day. They were definitely not disabled but in wheelchairs and you know Mike of course is disabled and in a wheelchair but this was an opportunity where they could do something together and, and it, the, the disability didn't matter. The object of the shuffleboard game is the this the closest to the edge without going off the table gets the point. I'm putting myself in their shoes. If it was me, I would think that it would be good to see two people that can walk at any time to play a game that they play. So I think that it helped them. And I, Mike told me, and the one I was working with told me that uh, it was really good for them. Like, they liked it. And they already told me that I played good. Mike told Twine that he played good. Everybody played good, even if we lost. So, you know, so. And they could forget that, you know, they were able-bodied and Mike was disabled. Uh, and just, you know, have, you know, do stuff that guys do and, and have fun that way and relate on a different level that didn't have anything to do with disability. So from that standpoint, I, I think it was a good sort of bonding thing for them. time when we went in the store I picked up a Milky Way and I couldn't and they, you know we went to I guess for her to see I could home um, uh, pay for it McLaughlin it was McLaughlin's idea I think um, and I when I did it um uh, it was just I got lost for a minute yeah I'm like a thing I felt like am I really paralyzed because I, I pretended like I couldn't I was I wasn't I was in character so I pretended like I I was paralyzed Oh, straight down the hallway and make a left. Right. But where? What's our destination? The bathroom. Oh, you imagine this is going to be difficult because you're in a chair trying to go to the bathroom. Uh oh. 
Oh, I don't think we're going this way. Let's do something. I got a man for grass. Oh, you got the bucket back there. You got to use. to it and I hope I never will because sad sad to say but I'm just I couldn't do that it's too hard for me I, and I realized that it's a privilege going to the bathroom and being by yourself standing or sitting down or standing up period At my work, I also am on a computer. At first, it was difficult for me to use a computer because I had to punch one key at a time. But now, um, my work and my boss, she's going to give me a voice-activated computer where it would be easier for me and I can get the work done faster. Oh, do you know what I do? I daydream sometimes that um, I could play golf or do things. And I wish that was me out there in that golf course and not in this chair. Reality hit me because, because I'm like, dang, I ain't really, I'm really experiencing it. And I really could get up. It came, it came to my head a couple of times, like, what if, you know, I'm glad it's not. Emotionally, it was difficult for me because I, I went out, I seen everybody. It wasn't nobody unless you worked there with its own. Everybody other than that, everybody was in a wheelchair. And I'm like, I felt like I was in a twilight zone because I could have got up. You think, like, you have to spare something for you to be really caring about, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I care now. Like, I didn't care before I did it, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, like I don't think nobody cares. Yeah, but you, if you experience it, I bet you have some type of feelings in it or caution about it, you know what I'm saying? As the day went by, they really realized that uh, being disabled is, is not a funny thing at all, and riding around in, in a power wheelchair is not that fun. It's very confining, and um, they're used to being able to do whatever they want when they want to, and suddenly they weren't able to do that. My day with Antoine and Calvin is going good. I think these two guys understand what I go through and how to live in a wheelchair and being disabled is all about. I think Twan, he handled it better in a wheelchair than Calvin did. I think um, Calvin was afraid of the wheelchair, where Antoine, he got in a wheelchair like it was like It's a piece of cake. Um, I guess what he don't know is I have to live this every day of my life. 
and he had to live it for one day, or not even one day, just a half a day. I guess in, in the back of his mind, he felt like, because he can get up and go, and I can't. So I don't think it was no big deal to him. Experience was fine. I mean, it was something that I don't want to do, but I'm glad I don't have to be like this. So I'm t I ain't taking nothing for granted. I'm just be careful. That's all. Thanks, man. I guess you two can get up now. For real? Yes. Let me see. Let me see. Everybody in this world has a disability. The difference between me and a lot of people is you can see my disability. I cannot see a lot of people's disability. I felt, believe it or not, I felt a little a bad about it. I saw Mike look at me get out that chair, but um, there wasn't any way for me to feel about that because I had, I had to get up. I, could, I couldn't stay. It was very, very hard for me to watch him watch me get up. I want to thank Mike for being so outspoken and telling us how he lived, how you live. I appreciated you sharing your day with me. And it was real nice and it felt good to get up and I like, this is your house. You got a nice little house, no matter how many roommates you got. <laughs> so, you know, like, it all feel, it's, it's, all, it's all nice and it's like, thanks. So, you know, like, you know. I hope um, that they don't take life for granted. I hope when they were with me, Calvin and Antoine being in the chair, that they realize that life is too short and don't take anything for granted.